Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what are about to end the video? There's another paid request, this time from Mr. Lehman. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, uh, commentary, lists, rankings, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. Now, this is a film called An Innocent Man. It's 1989. It's a prison drama with a little bit of action in it. Starring Tom Selleck. Now, Tom Selleck is mostly known for the TV show Madden P.I., the original show, not the, the new one. And he tried to have a career in movies. Uh, the one big success he had was Three Men and a Baby. Now, way back in the day, he was actually going to be Indiana Jones. But the guys making the TV show said, You can't, you gotta do this show. But. There was so much of a delay that Tom Seller could have done both. So those producers fucked him over. But hey, Harrison Ford got to be Indiana Jones, my favorite Harrison Ford role. And Tom Seller got to do Man in P.I., which guarded him a lot of success. But in movies, other than Three Men and a Baby, he just could not find a lot of other hit films to star in. I love Runaway. I got the, the Blu-ray over there. I think Runaway is very underrated, where he fights Gene Simmons, and it's in the future, where robots are used as household, either made or hardware, like, kind of a world where rickety old robots are kind of used for, you know, to help all sorts of stuff, help jobs, help cook, clean, whatever it may be. And then you have Gene Simmons' character that has these chips that could make stuff haywire and turn them into killing machines. I, I, just, I love Runaway. Underrated film. Like I said, Three Men and a Baby I really love. That deserves a damn Blu-ray. I don't know why it doesn't have one. It was only the biggest hit of 1987. He was in a few others that just didn't, didn't do well. Including this one, Sally. And this one is a pretty good movie. I won't say it's my favorite prison type of movie. That would go with the Shawshank Redemption. Uh, Lock Up with Sylvester Stallone I would put above this. Because Lock Up I felt much more of the... Even more of the drama. And uh, I, I felt the drama here. But I felt it more in Stallone's Lock Up. And I think that's one of Stallone's more underrated performances. And the Bill Conti score. And uh, I think you know, the fact most of it does take place in the prison. And you see just this... Elev elevation of turmoil Stallone goes through. It's like when he tries to escape and he gets the down cell in such a... I think it, I think that film does a little bit better job of building this crescendo to the end with, is he going to electrocute you down cell in? Is he not? Um, this one, there's a little bit in the... Well, not a little, but there's a chunk in the prison and then it's after the prison and... I wouldn't say it feels like two different movies. In fact, in the, in the hindsight, it works better so that it doesn't feel like just a rip-off of Lockup with Stallone. So, I think in retrospect, at least it makes it differentiate itself between the two. Because they both came out in 1989, and both bombed. <coughs> I guess no one was really... I mean, hell, even Shawshank Redemption didn't do that well. I just, a lot of people just don't want to see, you know, prison movies. At least not in theaters. <clears throat> but Tom Selleck is this guy who works with airplanes. Is an engineer. Has a very wonderful wife. I forget her name, but she's the lady who was Steve Barton's wife in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Living a good life. <clears throat> and these dirty cops. They are played by David Rashi and Richard Yun. David Rashi, sorry if I mispronounced his last name, he was on this TV show called Sledgehammer back in the day. Sort of a, kind of a fun, I've seen only clips of it to be fair, but it's kind of a parody on cop shows, and a lot of people quite liked it. And Richard Yun, 
he's a guy in Indiana Jones The Last Crusade and the flashback who gives Indy the hat. That's Richard Young. So these two are dirty cops where they do these drug busts and they take some of the money or some of the other stuff and they work around it, sell it, make extra money on the side. So they do this, what they think is a drug bust, but they get the wrong place. And one of them, David's character, is so coked up, he sees Tom Selleck, thinks he's got a gun, shoots him, finds out he's only got a hair dryer, and then they find out they're at the wrong place. So they plant some drugs, they plant some a gun on him. Of course he says he's innocent, he gets framed for it, but doesn't matter, the system screws him over, and he gets six years in prison. So he goes to prison, and as him dealing with prison life, he meets up with this guy, played by F. Murray Abraham, and there's other people. There's this guy named Jingles, who wants to make him his sweetie pie, so to speak. The guy who played Jingles, I recognize him. He played... He was in Dress Part 3. He played the character Nash. He was one of the people taking William H. Macy and Sam Neill and them to the island. He's a guy that the Spinosaurus grabs, takes away, and eats. And F. Murray Abraham... He decides to help Tom sell, sell it out a bit. Because he too also dealt with those cops back to the day. And maybe he owns some tit for tat later. Who knows. Other people in the film. I do like this one guy who's this internal affairs agent. I wish there was a bit more done with his character. But I did like him. Tom Selleck, I thought, gave a fairly good performance, but I'm a Tom Selleck fan. I know some people and critics thought that his dialogue was a bit arbitrary or it's him trying to sound tough, but I don't know, maybe because I, I buy Tom Selleck in that role. Maybe people wanted Tom Selleck in roles that were more Madden P.I. Maybe they want him to just play Madden P.I. in movies. That type of smart aleck, fun-loving guy. And maybe they got so used to seeming that that technically the closest you got to it was three men and the baby, honestly. Although I think he's great at runaway, but he's not really wisecracked, and he's a guy who's afraid of heights, and he's taking his job seriously. Same with this. I mean, he's dealing with hard issues in prison. There's not really a lot of time to joke around. But I thought he gave a very wonderful performance. F. Murray Abraham was good support. Can't really go wrong with F. Murray. The villains, some say they're over the top. I thought they were rather fun to watch. One thing I will say, though, is that the prison stuff, it's six years, he serves three I don't know what it is. Something about it, I didn't really get a feel of the time he spent in it. Because it's... He gets there, people threaten him. He meets F. Murray Abraham. This one guy gets on fire, he tries to help him out, but F. Murray's like, what the hell are you doing? You know, you don't get yourself killed. Pretty much he's pushed to either do something to this Jingles guy or he's going to be someone's biatch. Bitch. He does it. He... And then pretty much... It seems like there's a big cut in between that. And... When it gets to... Wait a minute. It's been three years? Holy shit. I, it makes it seem as if it's been three months. Not three years. So something about that seemed a bit jarring to me ever since I first saw it. And so when I compared to Lockup, it felt like there were so many other obstacles in prison that Stallone went through. Not just the prison guards beating him up, uh, the bit where Stallone has to keep being woken up and saying this line and he's so tired 
uh, the stuff with the the car they built being broken up and put as a hunter junk, his wife being threatened by the guards, where you know they put her picture up, the stuff with Sonny Landham, the football game where they keep giving these big hard hitting crunches to him. I just felt the turmoil of Stallone's character much more. And that's what gravitates me more. Here, there's some of it, but just not as much as, say, The Shawshank Redemption, or Lockup, or In Hell with Van Damme. It just felt, I don't want to say tame, but it felt just not as deep, not as dangerous, not as much of a journey of difficulty that I've seen other prisoners go through in other movies, like the ones I mentioned. And that's maybe one of the, the few nitpicks I have with the film, that part of me wonders if... It goes back and forth. Part of me is like, man, if more stuff took place in the pi in the prison, maybe that could work. But at the same time, again, it would just feel like just sort of a copy of Lockup. Not a copy, but too similar. Although I do like the third act. In fact, the the third act was funny. I watched Cisco and Ebert's review, and they liked the prison stuff more than the stuff outside. And I'd probably say I liked the outside stuff more than the prison. I did because of that, where the prison... I like Tom Soda and F. Murray Abraham. I do like this line that a guy says where, you ain't got to stand tall in here, but you have to stand up. It's a decent way of showcasing a guy who's like, well, I'm not going to kill someone over a toothbrush, but then he's pushed to that limit, whereas it leaves him being a tougher individual on the other end. But yeah, I just felt, I just, I want to see a bit more obstacles, a bit more stuff for that journey in prison, I guess. But still, I thought it was pretty decent movie where, you know, the direction's alright. There's nothing too dynamic of the direction, but it's, it's capable. Like I said, what made the film work for me is enjoying the cast. I, like I said, I like the internal affairs guy. There's a point where he roughs up some guy, the dirty cops, like, you leave this lady alone. And by the way, I don't like being called a punk ass, hmm, the N-word, boy. That's a Baja Jola. He's been a few stuff. I think he was in The Serpent and the Rainbow. He's been a few other films. I think he's the guy in The Last Boy Scout who Bruce Willis, they're in this alleyway and Bruce Willis starts telling like your mama jokes. Is able to fuck him up in the middle of doing that. I think that's him. Like I said, I kind of wish to have seen a bit more of him in the movie. And the third act where he gets out, the cops won't leave him alone, so he comes in with a plan to give a bit of payback to screw the cops over and work with the internal affairs, work with some people that F. Murray Abraham helps him out with, including one of his guys, played by M.C. Daney, who is the prisoner pilot in Con Air, as well as other movies. And you do just some fun stuff at the end, which I won't spoil, some you know decent fisticuffs and things of that nature. Um, I even liked the song at the end by Joe Cocker, When the Night Comes. I really did enjoy that song. I thought that was a good one. But it actually got stuck in my head and it would go da 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 na 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 When the Night Comes. I kind of wish someone would use that for a lockup uh, tribute. Because that would be a bit different. But, uh... I don't really have the editing things to do tributes anymore. But, uh, hey, again, if anyone does a, a lock of tribute when the night comes, let me know. I'd love to give it a watch. But The Innocent Man, I always thought it was, it's a pretty decent movie. Like I say, if you like Tom Selleck, if you're, whatever you know, people just say it's cliche, 
But you know what? Sometimes you watch movies like this. I mean, this was a paid request, but sometimes you watch movies like this because you just want what you consider a satisfying story. Person fucked over by the system and getting their the bad guys getting their comeuppance I'd gotta be able to overcome the injustice of the system and get like, yeah, get them, you know, that type of satisfaction. You know, that's what escapism is all about. It might not be the most original movie, but like I said, if, if you like those kind of films where you just you're cheering at the end, and you're glad things worked out for your good guys, and, you know, as F. Murray Abraham says at the end, you know, ain't life a motherfucker. <laughs> and the bad guys get their just desserts. This is a pretty decent film to watch. I know it does have a Blu-ray, which uh, I don't have. Maybe I'll pick it up one day. But yeah, it's a pretty decent flick, and definitely world worth a watch. So... Uh, with that said, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.